people fighting for positions in church. Just fighting for positions. It is sad because I always think about it. Those that really call don't want the position. Somebody will be mad tonight. Those that really call don't want the position. They will not step up to their position. And those that ain't called are all up in the church taking the position. Y'all might say she shouldn't have said that, but it's true. So if anybody mad, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Because I'm telling you, because when God called you, he's going to anoint you for the position. Hallelujah. You can't come up and take a position that do not belong to you. Hallelujah. And that's what's going on in the church. The people walking up in the church taking all kind of positions that do not belong to them. And so when somebody come in with a demon in them, they cannot cast the demon out because they ain't been in position and they have not been trained for the mission. They have not been equipped for the mission. They have not been anointed for the mission. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm home tonight, so honey, I'm going to work this word and the word going to work for me tonight. Hallelujah. If anybody get mad, it ain't nothing but the devil. Hallelujah. And I ain't scared of y'all. Because I know what I got in me. I know what God called me to do. Hallelujah. I've been anointed and appointed for this. Yeah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. See, when you know that you've been anointed and appointed for this. Hallelujah. Take no devil in hell. Hallelujah. Come and take what God has given you. Hallelujah. This is my joy and I got it tonight. This is my anointing and I got it tonight. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep what God has given me. Hallelujah. I let the devil know that you can have what God has given to me. You can kill what God has anointed. I'm anointed by God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I come here tonight to let you women folks know you better get up and press your way in. You better get up and push. You better get up and praise your way out. I don't care what you're going through. You better know that God is on your side. You better know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. You better get up and push. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You already got the victory. Get up and push your way out.
house, I'm praying. When I'm driving in my car, I'm praying. When I'm just going, when I'm stirring up my pots, I'm praying. Come on now. Hallelujah. Somebody say, oh, child, you can't be in the Holy Ghost that much. Hey, I'm praising God. I'm keeping my mind renewed. It's constantly praying. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I, I just give you praise. Come on now. You see, sometimes you got to take that walk through your house. When it seems like things might be getting crazy. Come on, see like the enemy fighting and coming up against you. Come on, using people to fight up the war against you. Sometimes you just got to, the honey, you just got to get some time to yourself and get that time alone with you and Jesus and begin to praise him like never before. And honey, I tell you, I promise you, when you come out of honey, you will feel much better. You will feel much better. Hallelujah, but you women tonight, I want to encourage you. Come on now, I want, I want to encourage you. If you got to get on the wall and begin to pray, whatever, you got to stay in this race. You can't give up, you got to stay in this race. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You got to, you just got to praise God. You got to believe in the word of God. Come on now. Is the enemy come up against your heart and open your mouth? God has already given you the victory to speak for. It. Come on now. He already given you the victory. But I think some of us don't even believe. Some of us really don't believe that God has given us the victory. We really don't believe that. But when you catch hold of the faith and you, be, you begin to believe God, come on now. Things will begin to turn for you. Amen. Might not be the way you want to turn, but it's going to be for the best. Come on now. Because see, we got to stop helping God. God, this is how I want you to do it. I want you to do this. Do it that way. Do it this way. When that might not even be the way God wanted it done. Come on now. Because some of us, we don't realize what we be praying for. We pray, some of us be praying for something that would take us out. And we don't even realize that. Oh, God, I need you to do this for me. I need you to do this. And praying for something that probably set you up and take you out. But God always come in and he begin to shift things around for you. Come on now. He begin to shift it. He begin to turn it and begin to work in your faith. Come on. You ain't got to get mad with your enemy and be ready to throw down on your enemy. You just put the word on your enemy. That's all you got to do. Put the word on the enemy. And stop letting the devil defeat you all the time. Hallelujah. Because see, I tell you, in, in, the, in the days and the time that we live in now, there's so much church drama going on. Some of y'all better grab on to God. Come on. And begin to speak the word in the church. The drama come up against you or the church. Begin to pray. Come on now. Begin to pray. And stop coming out call a meeting so we can get this straight now. Come on now. And then when you get to the meeting, things get worse. Because you got some of them that's just out of control. You can't tell them nothing. They want everything they way. Come on now. Want everything they way. But you got to have your mind renewed. Come on. And so when the enemy tried to come up and, and if somebody want to huddle up, come on, let's huddle up after church. We need to talk about this. You need to be in the spirit realm to know, uh-uh, no, we're not entertaining this devil. Come on now. If anything, we're going to throw this devil out. Come on. We're not entertaining no devil. We come up in church and we're concerned about people's lives being changed. We're not worried about entertaining no devils. Come on now. And see, that's, that's, what the, that's what the devil like. And see, you notice when you, have, when you call something concerning entertainment, everybody will be there. Everybody love to be entertained now. Come on now. Everybody love to be entertained. But when you call church and something serious, come on now, revival. Oh, church and 
when you call, you know, ain't too many people gonna show up. But when you got something concerning entertaining, and see, people don't understand that when you're walking in the flesh, the flesh loves to be entertained. But when you got the Spirit of God on the inside of the Spirit of God wants to be fed. So when the things of the Spirit begins to speak out, your spirit begins to feed on it. Come on now. Y'all, come on. Now y'all got me wondering. Y'all got yeah, come on now. Y'all got me wondering. Because the people at the concert be more hyped than this. Because when the devil throw a concert, how they throw one? Everybody be up. Have the fades all marked up with different colors of whatever they represent. Come on now. Be throwing each other in the air. Woo! You know, they be ready. But then when, the, when people come to the church and you use the word turn up, come on. I, I don't know. Don't y'all try to judge me tonight now. Because when they hear that, oh, you ain't saved. Oh, no, she ain't saved. That's for the world right there. But honey, let me, let me tell you something. I just said the word turned up, but it didn't say there's something, nothing on the inside of it. Because I know who I serve. I know who's on the inside of it. I know that I still have the power. I still have the anointing of God. Come on now. I better leave that alone. And then you got those that want to say they say to go out there and lay up with a man that they ain't married to, then they don't want to say nothing about that. But when you want to use a little word that the youth use, then they want to say you ain't saved. That you need to repent. Come on now. And people got to understand that we got a new generation that we working with. When we say, oh, we want them to worship God in spirit. How they going to worship in spirit and truth if they don't have the spirit of God on the inside? Yeah. Come on now. I know this is a little heavy. Because we say, oh, no, we don't need to use that for the youth. You know, we don't need to use. But we got the youth and we got to start working with the youth. Come on. Because the enemy is out to take control of the youth. Come on now. He ain't worried too much about the older folks. You know, everybody that's in the church that... You know, that's going around, running around in the church or whatever. He already know that most of them, you already got. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. I know he said, oh, she, she should have went there, but it's true. So he's going after the young generation. Come on now. Those that's out there, you know, the young people that God is calling and got a calling upon their life. Come on now. But see, when we realize that what we're here for and what we're here to do, then God will begin to move and God will begin to bless us. God will begin. And we got too many people worried about when we're going to get our new car. We got too many people worried about when we're going to get our new house. We got too many people worried about the materialistic thing in the world and not worried about when God's going to come through. Hallelujah. And bring a real deliverance in the house of God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Because see, real deliverance needs to take place. In order for you to be transformed, real deliverance needs to hit the house. Come on now. Hallelujah. Because we got so, like I said, we got so many people, they in the church, but soon as they out of the door, they bumping and grinding. Come on now. You even got some of your children throwing on because they don't understand. Because they say, well, when I go to church, mom be shouting, laying on the floor. And she grabbed the mic and she sing and, and give a testimony when we get home. But she be, you know, doing all kind of stuff. She be doing the boogie woogie. Come on now. Oh, we get in the car, she got different kind of music on. Come on now. And see, y'all sitting there, y'all taking it lightly, but you better be careful for what you're doing. Because I'm saying old babies will come up in the church and tell on you. Come on now. Same old babies gonna come up in the church and tell, oh, mama, sit down, mama. You just got through listening to our cat in the car. Come on now. And you'll be sitting there, sit down. Boy, you don't know what you're talking about. Sit down somewhere, boy. And the boy sitting there just telling everything about you. trying to, oh, sit down. She don't know what she's talking about. Yes, she do. Come on now. But we got to cover 
each other. We got to cover our babies. We got to cover each other in the church. Come on now. We are sisters in Christ. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We got to begin to cover one another. When one going through, hallelujah, you ought to be able to go over there and begin to pray for them. Begin to pray for them and let them know that it's going to be all right. We in this together. And see, that's the thing about it. We don't have enough people to come together and begin to fight together. Begin to pray together. Begin to fast together. Come on. Jesus. We don't have enough people to come together. When one going through, oh, yeah, I knew she was going to have that child. I knew it sooner or later. Because she just thinks she's too much in church. Watch out now. She thinks she's too much in church. Come on now, that's what they say. That's what they do. But honey, you, you can't worry about that. You can't worry about that. You got to be about God's business. Come on, you got to be about your father's business. Hallelujah. Your father's business being in that word and beginning to pray and begin to do what you what God called you to do. What have God called you to do in other words? Come on now, what have God called you to do? That's right. Glory to God. Say your name. Ain't no need to be trying to get on no door until I be in the usher to call people because God ain't called me to do that. I wouldn't be able to do it like they do it anyway. They've been appointed for it. When I walk in that door, I know women say, oh, how you doing? I'm like, wow. Oh, wow. I mean, they had to get me called for it. Come on now. You can't get no old grouch back there on the door. church and they got frowns on their face. You say, hey, how you doing? I don't want to hear that today. I'm doing, I'm doing fine, I guess. I guess God been good today. Come on now. You got the, the women, I'm telling you, they had, they had together. When I walked in that door, they had together. I got to give it up for them. They had together. Come on now. Cause places, honey, places I go and they have people at that door. <laughs> it makes you turn, you open the door, you right. It makes you want to turn around. Have your purse hanging on your shoulder and your Bible and turn right on back around. I said, nah, this ain't for me. <laughs> but when you got somebody that, you know, that walking in the position and proud of the position. Come on now. You can't take towels. Come on and abuse them. Cause see, we got too many people in the church holding titles, and they're abusing their title. You can't tell them nothing. Oh, I'm older than you. I've been in this a long time. I said, what the word your age got to do with it? And God used Samuel. He was a little boy. Come on, to conf to confront Eli, and let Eli know what was going on. Come on now. Oh no, you 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 understand? Oh no, you get. Yeah. That's what they say. Oh, you understand? Oh. I'm like, what in the world do the age got to do with it? Because when God don't call you and equip you to do something, He will anoint you to do it. He will anoint you to do it. So y'all women, y'all got to take pride in what you're doing. Come on, you got to get up in church. If if, if it's just to hold the door open, give God the praise while you're holding the door. Come on now. If you're here to sweep the floor, give God the praise by the sweeping the floor. Come on now. But a lot of people think when you're doing stuff like that, that's a little tight. Uh-huh. There you go. They don't want to do that kind of stuff. Okay. Ain't you finna sit there talking about sweeping up no church floor and cleaning up no seats and stuff. That ain't me there. But when you call them to some bit on the pulpit, oh, they ready. All you hear steps, because they be trying to get up there. And don't understand the things that you have to go through. Come on. The things that we have to fight against. The things that we have to press against. The things that we have to push against. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But we got to, we got to get up. We got to do what God called us to do. Hallelujah. It's time for us to fight back. Come on now. It's time for us to fight back. 
back in the days when, when honey, I, you know, I have, my mama was one of them old folks. Went up and, you know, love to go in church and, and do all that fasting and praying. And, honey, I miss that. Amen. You got church taking that out. Right. Come on, take your praying and fasting out. You know, you, I mean, you got people that, uh-uh, no. You talking about bringing a fast or something at the church, uh-uh. No, honey. Which is sad. Come on now. I understand you don't let anybody in your church. Because there's some people that really is the devil. Come on now. Some people that really is the devil. They got titles, but they the devil with a title. Come on, hold them tight, but they are devil with the tight. But you got some people that God has really called and God has really sent. Come on. But it's, I'm telling you, people are taking the prayer out of the churches. Come on, they don't want nobody praying in the church. Come on. And it's time to get on them knees and put them knees to work. It's time. I mean, if you've seen on the news how the people are being killed, you know, based on their religion. Come on, kill, because they believe in God, believe in Jesus. And we're not even going through that. And we can't, we won't even serve him. I mean, we got all the freedom over him. To give God the praise and just to, you know, rejoice. And we won't even take advantage of him. But this is the time and the season that we better take advantage of. Come on now. Because payday is coming out the while. Come on now. God has been breathing on the United States of America over and over. Come on now. But some of those things have been happening far off. Come on. God's going to allow those things to happen and come close to home. And if we don't have a prayer life, come on. If we don't know Jesus, we will be lost. Come on. We will be defeated. Hallelujah. So we better get in line and we better get tuned in to God. Come on now. And begin to praise God. Begin to get to And let him know, God, I love you. Come on now. God, build a protection around us. Ooh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because God's going to do it. People say, oh, everything, oh, everything get hard. I don't care how hard things get, God's going to look out for his people. So that's why I say, y'all better stay with God. Because God going to look out for you. You stay with him. He going to look out for you. Hallelujah. Don't worry about no house. God know what you need. Don't worry about no new car. God already know you need a new car. God already know that your window won't let up on your car. Come on. He already know your, your door keep getting stuck. But you got to keep pressing. You got to keep praising God. You got to keep coming to church. You got to keep giving him the praise. trust you. Would you give him praise in spite of? Would you say, Lord, I love you. God, I praise you. God, I need a new car. God, I know my door won't open, but I still give you the praise. God, I need a new house. My roof is leaking, but God, I still give you the praise. God, when I know do you still trust him. Hallelujah, Jesus. He want to know when you still give him praise in spite of. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, that's the thing. A lot of times we put materialistic stuff before God. But when we learn how to put God first, God will begin to give us everything that we need. He'll begin to give us everything that he said that he would give us. Hallelujah. We got to stop worrying about the new car. We got to stop worrying about the new house. Hallelujah. We just need to seek God first. Hallelujah. The kingdom of heaven. And all these things will be added upon you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He already know what you're going through. But God is saying, praise me anyhow. Glory be to God. He already know. Thank you, Jesus. But it's just sad that how the, how the flesh program us so that we don't want to praise him unless we get a check in the mailbox. We don't want to praise him unless somebody come and drop off a few hundred dollars. We don't want to praise him unless we get the new car and that we see it right in front of us and that we're driving it. We don't want to praise him if we don't have the new house. 
us. But we got to start giving God the praise. If I don't get the money that I need, I'm still going to praise you. If my life bill is not paid, I'm still going to praise you. Hallelujah, Jesus. You got to praise him in the house. God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And see, you, you just got to praise him anyhow. Praise him. 